monkey, you're like a fart in a frying pan right now. It's monkey in my, over here, and this is Zoe, who is an older dog, and she's pretty well behaved. We really didn't work with her very much, but a lot of this work should make her life a little bit more comfortable because we went over some structure and ways to get this puppy, monkey, to listen a little bit better. So um, we went over some basic rules to incorporate. I also just got done going over the escalating consequences I like to use to disagree with dogs. Remember hiss, then stand up, turn to face the dog, keep pivoting until the dog's stationary, take two steps backward, left foot, right foot, one step only, wait one second, then go back to doing what you're doing. Third consequence is to march directly at the dog until it turns sideways to you. At that point you stop, and then you go to the second consequence, you're pivoting until the dog's stationary, then take two steps backwards, pause again, then you can go back to doing what you're doing. So having that series of escalating consequences makes it easy to disagree with unwanted behaviors. However, I'm a positive reinforcement guy, and I like using dog psychology, so most of the session we focused on ways to use positive reinforcement to give the dog a reward or incentive to do what we want them to do. We wanna say no as little as we possibly need to, but sometimes we actually have to. So um, for uh, uh, the positive reinforcement, some of the things we did was we went over passive training. Passive training is simply just rewarding the dog for doing something on its own. So right here, if I say side, if I wanna teach him to roll over on his side, every time he does that action on his own, I reach over and pet him, and say the word off, uh, side, after a while, then he starts rolling over on his side to get that attention. Um, this is the easiest way you can train your dog. So every time he comes to you, if you pet him and say come, then now come represents come to the human, get a reward. Every time he sits down, pet him and say sit. Um, say just the command word, don't say good sit, and don't say sit to a dog that com that's completely different sound, they hear enunciation. Uh, those are my business cards, buddy. You're being a pistol right now. Uh, let me see, so uh, every time the dog does something in desired behavior, if he goes to his dog bed, pet him and say bed. I would come up with a more unique name than bed. I would say like uh, beach, Cabo, uh, palace, or something like that, a fun command word. Uh, let me see, uh, so that's passive training. Petting with a purpose is, is stop petting the dog when it jumps up on us, he, or nudging us, because he's basically giving us an order. And if he tells me what to do and I do it enough, after a while he gets the impression that he has dominion over me. Because when I tell David what to do, he does it. So in the future, what we want to do instead of doing that is when he comes over and jumps up on us, we're going to use some of the techniques that I went over in the video above to get him to stop jumping. And as soon as he gets down, we're going to reach over and pet him and say off if he was jumping up on us. Um, or if he's nudging me, I would maybe use my hand to manipulate him into an, uh, like this. And as soon as he sits down, I lower it, let him lick the treat off my hand, or just give him a pet if I don't have a treat. And then I would say the word sit. So uh, if, he, if he demands attention, instead of giving him what he wants, I'm going to ask him, I'm going to tell him to do something that I want. And as soon as he does that, then I'm going to pet him. And at that point, I can pet him for hours. Uh, but he has to change his state. Um, after a while, what will happen is instead of coming up and, and demanding attention by jumping up on us, he's going to come and sit in front of us and say, look, I'm prepaying for some attention. Can you give me a little scratch on my belly? So if he does that, you want to acknowledge that and pet him and say just the word crash or sit or whatever the command word of whatever the action is that you asked him to do. And like I said, after a while, he'll learn demand and come start sitting in front of people as his way of saying, hey, I want you to pet me. Um, passive training and petting with a purpose are by far the two easiest things that you can do that will have the biggest impact on your dog's behavior if you're consistent. It'll take you about a month to get in the habit of doing it. It'll take the dogs about a month to get in the habit of doing it themselves. Um, but once you do, then the dog knows things that it can do to make you happy. Now, if you notice, the energy here is nice. When I first came in, his energy was crazy. Now, we just got done doing a focus exercise, which uh, we don't have on camera, but if the guardian has any questions about how to do that, make sure you text me or call me. I can send you links to a, a focus exercise I did with other clients. But remember, it's one second, one second. So we're gonna wait for him to look at us in the face. As soon as he does, we're gonna raise the treat right in front of our nose, and then go straight towards the dog. Don't say the command word until after it goes into his mouth. Um, and then after a while, he'll just start staring at you. Then, and it's one second, one second at first. Eventually, it'll be one second, two seconds. Eventually one second, 20 seconds. But it's gonna take you a long time to get there. I usually have about 10 to 15 treats in my hand. And if, because these guys are little dogs, I would split the tricky trainers in half. Keep all of the treats in your left hand and one in your right hand. I kind of hold it like this and I can kind of shield it. He was really going after my finger trying to get it. Once he realized he didn't, that wasn't gonna work, he looked up at me, I raised it and went straight to his mouth and said focus after it went in. After doing that, uh, after I spent about five minutes doing it, his guardian spent about a minute doing it and he's pretty much looking at her right away. This way we can teach the dog a nice way to redirect their attention away from something that uh, we don't want them to be doing. That's something else we went over in a video that I don't think I'm gonna post on the website, uh, but how to redirect your dog from chewing. 
Um, so a lot of dogs, you know, dogs chew because it feels good. It's a nice way to, uh, if they're bored, give them something to do. So uh, now a lot of dogs uh, like getting the habit of chewing whatever is available. That's why what I like to do is actually create a situation where the dog only has a pro access to appropriate chew toys. That's why I suggest the guardian start feeding him out of uh, uh, treat dispensing toys. I also recommend setting up a puppy playroom. Now, if you go to my website, dogonproblems.com slash quest, you'll see a section that's all about raising puppies. And I have a section on the first page of that, and you might have to start from the beginning, but it says setting, preparing for the dog before it arrives, and that's set, setting up a puppy playroom. If you have a guest room, and you get the puppy play gates, there's uh, eight panels, they're 24 inches wide, and usually about 30 inches tall. You can put those around the walls, around the couch, around the bed, or the dresser, or whatever it is. The dog doesn't have access to chewing on those things. Then we get to fill up the room with all sorts of glorious toys the dog enjoys chewing on. And the dog is not allowed to take those toys out of that room. Now, first when we set up the puppy play area, I usually get two of the gates and put them together so it's a big enough area. I would bring uh, Zoe in and I would go in there with one of the guardians and I would sit down, you know, grab some pillows, sit down, watch some TV, you know, TV on your iPad, read a book. You know, we want to spend some time in there with him until he settles down and eventually takes a nap. Once dogs nap places or sleep, they kind of are, it's a good way of indicating I'm comfortable in the situation. I would also have his uh, wire kennel in there with the play gate attached to it and just follow the instructions in there. But this tra kennel trains him because the only soft place to lay is in there because we're going to lay vinyl flooring on top of the carpet in case he has accidents. Um, and we're also going to uh, fill it up with all those uh, great chew toys. So when we put him in there, there's a lot of things to occupy his time. And we're going to feed him in there when it's mealtime with the treat dispensing toys. Now I have a post about that, about how feeding your dog out of toys can increase their intelligence, also on Quest Ed. Um, now make sure for those toys, the treat dispensing toys, once all the food is gone, we pull the toy away, otherwise they'll destroy the toy trying to get more food to come out when it stops paying off. But this way the dog's more interested in chewing on his toys because toys distribute food. Where chewing the couch or the shoes or anything else, doesn't. it feels good to chew on it, but it doesn't pay off. Um, let me see. Um, if the dog is licking something, we have a bunch of little baby carrots. What I did was I just uh, tossed one on the floor. We have hardwood floors. Dog walked away and lay down and started chewing on the, uh, on the uh, carrot. Carrots are dense and they can ingest them. So we're redirecting the dog away from something we don't want them to chew on and giving them an appropriate chew response. Something else I like to do is have uh, little bones or antlers in my pocket at all, point, at all times, just one. The dog's nudging or chewing or licking me. If I just go give it, to the dog is not very interesting to a dog. I need to tease it. So I kind of like twirl it around, got to tap it here, tap it here, to get to the point where the dog's trying to snap and take it. When it finally does, let it win and pull it away from you. That becomes a trophy. The dog's much more interested in playing with that. Then he's gonna lay down and chew on that. Immediately pick up another bone and put it in your back pocket so you always have one with you. Other things you can do is you can yelp, like I don't wanna do it right now because they're so sedate, but a high-pitched yelp like it hurt. Then retract and freeze for a second. Once the dog is calm, then you can go back to petting it. You should this happen anytime the dog's teeth touch your skin. What you're telling the dog is if your teeth touch me, I lose interest in, 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 in engaging with you at all. And so after a while, the dogs will learn bite inhibition. It's important actually to play tug of war and have toys that the dog's going to clamp, clamp down on. And eventually it'll kind of touch your skin. When it does, yelp or pull away. The dog needs to learn bite inhibition. It's one of the most important things we can teach them. And a dog with good bite inhibition could be under-socialized, under-trained, but still not maul someone's arm because it got its tail caught in a, in a door or something. Um, and that comes with dexterity of practice. So we need to put the dogs in a situation to practice and learn those things. Now, I did recommend that we enroll him into our puppy class. We have a 201 and a 301 class. The 201 class will help with a lot of the jumping and the chewing and the nipping. Uh, the 301 class is all about loose leash training. We actually ironically do that without a leash. So I believe that they're going to sign uh, uh, a little monkey up for that, and you'll see monkey uh, at our training sessions. Now, I also uh, went over uh, potty training. Um, I would suggest that the guardian come up with a new command word for potty training. She watched one of my videos, so she knows all the little tricks, and I've got a lot of potty training videos on my website at doggoneproblems.com if you have this problem with your dog. Uh, the three times the dog's most apt to need to go, right after waking up, five minutes after eating, and 15 minutes after the start of playtime. So if they start playing together, Siri, give me a 15-minute timer. And then at the end of 15 minutes, you take the dog out, whether it tells you it needs to or not. The idea is to put the dog in a position where it's the appropriate place to potty, and often enough where it gets uh, into a habit of doing that, because when it potties outside, it gets a treat. If it potties inside, there's no such treat that's delivered. Again, we're giving them an incentive to do what we want. 
Remember, as soon as the dog starts to pee or poop, we say the word once. Let's say we're gonna use the word Putin. We say Putin once, as soon as he starts, and as soon as he gets done, we pop the treat in his mouth. His guardian did a great job of this outside. She got that treat in his mouth right away. Three seconds is your maximum, a third of a second is your goal. And she said the uh, Putin, well, she said her word, as soon as the treat goes in the mouth. Now, sometimes you can jumpstart this by taking the dog out for a week and with five treats. So as soon as it pees or poops outside, Putin, 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 Putin. Yes, I know, that's a lot of Putin. A lot of Putin for Putin. But now the dog's like, holy cow, what did I just do to get that jackpot of treats? I have to remember so I can do that again. And then the dog does it again the next time it gets that same five treats. Um, after a week, it's like, I'm not gonna pee inside. I'm not gonna waste it by peeing on the hardwood floor because I get no reward, but outside I get a big reward. And after that first week, then you can go back down to maybe three treats or one treat uh, once the dog seems to have gotten it. Uh, we don't wanna ever make a big deal uh, uh, to you know, punish the dog for having an accident in the house because that'll teach the dog just the human gets mad when they potty and that's a bad problem to have. Um, also, something else since dogs like to walk, another technique that I've uh, used for with great success is taking the dog outside to potty. Every time it potties, we go for a little walk around the block. If we go outside and it doesn't potty, we bring it back inside. I only give it five minutes. If it doesn't go in five minutes, as a puppy, they get too distracted. After five minutes, it's just saying it's not urgent enough. Take the dog back inside, carry it around with you or keep the le it on the leash and keep the leash tied to your waist. It only takes a second for him to have an accident. And then after 15 to 45 minutes, sometime in that range, you're gonna take the uh, range, you're gonna take the dog back outside, give it another five minutes to go. What we're hoping the dog does is when it's outside, it's like, oh, it's not urgent enough, I come inside, well, I can't pee because my human's right there, I mean, the human's holding me. We wanna have the dog get to the point where like, I am doing the potty dance because I really have to potty. And we take it outside and it eliminates right away. Then we go for a little bit of a walk. Now for the puppy playroom, this is the downside of the puppy playroom. It will, the dog will have accidents in the house. Uh, not in the house, but in the puppy playroom because it might be in there times where it's telling you that it has to go and doesn't go. So um, if, if you, if the first time you go in there, if the dog, it'll usually pee far away from where it wants to hang out. That's where I would start putting down puppy pads in that same location. Don't move the location once you put it down. Sometimes the dog will actually learn to go on the puppy pad. <laughs> now you can do things like making sure you take the dog out and unload it before you put it in the puppy playroom. But overnight it might have an accident. That's okay if it does. Um, but that's why we want to teach the dog uh, proper, you know, if you go outside, you get the special reward. Um, let me see what else. Um, am I forgetting anything? Uh, the human needs to eat first. So I eat first and then I give the dog permission to eat. I would show you a feeding ritual, but I think she's going to start feeding him out of doggy toys. And I would, if possible, try to feed him out of three, to uh, three times a day instead of twice a day. That way he can feed him a smaller portion and he eats it all. This way he's also earning his food, makes him feel better about it and like he accomplished something, he has pride in it. And it takes more time, which gives them something else to do. Other things you wanna do is look for ways to delay gratification. I talked about this a little bit in the jumping video, but you know, ask the dog to wait a little bit longer each time before you give them what they want. That helps them build in some more self-control. There's also things we can do like creating uh, games like hide and seek or, you know, well, really training overall can really help boost the dog's self-esteem as well. So I'd like to see the garden. She's going to come to our puppy class. We have a new curriculum. There's a lot of great stuff we're going to teach in there. But you might want to also go to Google or uh, yeah, uh, uh, YouTube and search for easy dog tricks. Teaching dogs, especially tricks like the, uh, or commands like stay or balancing a treat on their nose, those are hard because they require the dog to develop self-control. But that self-control will help with bladder control, with pottying inside, barking at people outside, um, all sorts of other impulse control issues. All right, well, as you can see, these dogs are way out of control. <laughs> uh, but this is, a, this is usually my good indicator that I did a good session is when dogs behave like this, all right? So all pooped, right? Well, this is Monkey and Zoe's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.